In the next 30 or so lectures, we're going to begin our discussion on a new type of group in organic chemistry that we haven't yet spoken about, known as carboxylic acids. And let's begin by discussing the structure of carboxylic acids. Now, carboxylic acids have a general form that looks something like this. So we have a carbon-oxygen double bond, so we have the carbonyl group, and we have the carbon-oxygen single bond, and the H attached to our oxygen, so we have the hydroxyl group. So within the carboxylic acid, we have two types of groups. We have the carbonyl group and we have the hydroxyl group. We also have some type of group or atom attached to our carbon. So this can be an H atom or it can be some other type of hydrocarbon. Now the fact that we have the hydroxyl group makes our carboxylic acid into a good acid as we'll see in the next lecture. The fact that we have the carbon-oxygen double bond makes our carboxylic acid relatively reactive as we'll see in the next several lectures. So basically we have a very similar, in fact almost identical, pi bonding molecular system within the carboxylic acid between the carbon and the oxygen. And this pi system makes our carboxylic acid as reactive as the carbonyl group. Now, our carboxylic acid can basically exist in two energy states. It can have two energy forms. One is called the syn form, the other is called the anti form. Now, the anti form contains an H atom attached to our oxygen that points away from the carbon oxygen double bond, as shown in this diagram. On the other hand, the syn energy form contains the H atom that points towards the general direction of this carbon-oxygen double bond. And it turns out that at equilibrium, and let's say at room temperature, this syn form predominates over this anti form. So we'll have much more of the syn than the anti at equilibrium. And this is because this syn form is thermodynamically more stable and lower in energy than our anti-form. The question is why? Why should the syn form of the carboxylic acid in which the H atom points towards the carbon-oxygen double bond be more stable and lower in energy than the anti-form in which the H points away? Well, recall that oxygen is more electronegative than the H atom. So the H atom is electropositive, the oxygen is electronegative. In the syn form, we have the H atom being in close proximity to the oxygen. And so the electronegative oxygen, which bears a partial negative charge, will interact via intramolecular bonds, intramolecular forces, with the electropositive H atom that has a partial positive charge. So the 1s orbital of the H interacts with the sp2 hybridized orbital of this oxygen, these two electrons, forming a stabilizing system. So this takes place within the syn but does not take place within the anti because the oxygen is simply too far away from the H. So we see that at equilibrium, the syn form of the carboxylic acid will predominate over our anti. Now, the question is, if this is in fact an equilibrium and the anti interconverts between the anti and the syn, what is the reaction mechanism of this interconversion? So let's suppose the carboxylic acid is found in water. When the carboxylic acid is found in water, carboxylic acid interconverts between the anti and the syn relatively easily because the water can act as our acid. So basically, let's suppose we begin with the anti form. In the anti form, we have the carboxylic Carbon oxygen double bond where the oxygen can play the role of a Lewis base. So the base grabs our H because it has a lone pair of electrons, forming this resonance stabilized intermediate in which the positive charge is delocalized among the oxygen of this and the oxygen of this. 
Now in the next step, the hydroxide that is formed in step one grabs the H off of the other oxygen, off of this oxygen. And when this H is protonated, it's protonated on this side of the oxygen. So when our molecule, the final molecule is formed, the H will point towards this oxygen of the carbon oxygen double bond. So this is how we go from the anti in which the H points away to the sin in which the H points towards this system. And this is thermodynamically more stable, it's low in energy, and so in equilibrium, it will predominate compared to our anti. Now, the final thing that I want to discuss in terms of the structure of carboxylic acids and how they behave with respect to one another is something called a dimeric form of carboxylic acid. Basically, if we have two carboxylic acids in close proximity, they will orient uh, with respect to one another in, in such a way that will create a stabilizing dimeric structure. So, two carboxylic carboxylic acids in close proximity can group together to form a dimeric structure that is stabilized by, once again, intermolecular bonding. So the intermolecular bonding is a dipole-dipole interaction. So basically, if we have one carboxylic acid that orients with another carboxylic acid, we see that this electronegative oxygen can interact with the electropositive H of the other carboxylic molecule, while our H of this carboxylic molecule will interact with the oxygen of the other. So we basically flip them and we create these intermolecular inter interactions we call dipole-dipole bonds or hydrogen bonds. So we have hydrogen bonding in this dimeric form and that will greatly stabilize our system and lower its energy as a whole. So dipole-dipole or hydrogen bonds between the electronegative oxygen of one atom and the electro or of one carboxylic acid and the electropositive hydrogen of the other carboxylic acid will create a very stabilizing system. And that is how these two molecules basically interact with respect to one another when they are found in close proximity. So this lowers the energy of the entire system than compared to the case where these two molecules were very far away.